Welcome to this educational tool designed to shed light on your career path. Be it fine arts, dance, nursing, or sports, we pick the minds of the best and the brightest with you in mind. My name is Robert Macon. Hi, I'm Tamarie. I'm Melissa Contreras. And I'm Raymond McDaniel. And you're, and you're watching, watching Talk, Talk Back, Back at, at West LA, LA College. College. Welcome to Talk Back, right here at West LA College. I'm Pete Allman. Today our special guest is a lady that has a vision of not just improving our environment, but she is the trustee of the West Los Angeles College, if you will, and her name is Nancy Perlman. Nancy, it's great having you on the show. Thank you so very much. I'm so pleased to be here because I used to teach anthropology here at West LA College, but it's just one of the colleges for our nine colleges in the Los Angeles Community College District. So I have to represent all of them, but I have a special place for this beautiful campus up here on the hill. Obviously, it's in Culver City, and it's on a hill, and it's probably the least known of, out of all the campuses, but certainly a very spiritual place, enlightening place, if you will, with some great curriculum, if you will. What's great is to be tucked away. So we are on a hill, so you really feel an academic environment when you're here. But we represent more than Culver City, West Los Angeles, Beverly Hills, surrounding communities, and I hope everybody takes advantage of our fine academic programs, our vacational programs, and even our community service classes that people can come and enjoy. For the folks out there that perhaps don't know about West LA College, what are your functions as a trustee and why should they send their kids here to this particular college on the hill in Culver City? It's really two separate questions. What does a trustee do? We are elected by the public. It's a regular election. We're politicians, so to speak. I like to still think of myself as an <coughs> academic. But we create the policy for all the colleges in the district, including West LA. We hire and fire the chancellor, and that means also we interview the presidents. And they are the administrative leadership who set the tone, and I think that's so critical. We vote on the budget, how to spend your tax dollars. And we have to decide whether or not it goes to faculty and staff and salaries, whether or not it goes to student services, maintenance and operation of the buildings, because there's never enough money. So that's a real problem. But one of the things that I'm particularly involved in and very concerned about is our building program, thanks to the taxpayers we got three bonds passed so that we could upgrade our facilities. Because I was teaching in bungalows, and I said, if I got on the board, no more bungalows when we have our new buildings. And they're high-tech buildings with all sorts of uh, modern technologies. But I wanted to be sure that they were green and sustainable. And the advantage of that is that we can save money. If we're not wasting energy, if we're not wasting water, if we are using recycled materials and having proper recycling programs, these kinds of things means there's more money for the classes, and that's what's ultimately the most important. Let's so, talk about the improvements for the people out there that you know remember West LA having bungalows, but it certainly has changed over the years, and there are a lot of new buildings. So describe that for me if you would. Yes, I'm very proud of our new buildings because they do meet the LEED standard, which is uh, certified in silver. In fact, some of them are coming in gold and platinum. Uh, even our new food services, I mean, good organic food and healthy local food so that students don't have to go off campus. They can eat well here. But we have a wonderful a range of programs from the music department to the sciences, and we're here on a hill next to the Baldwin Hills Conservancy. So there's so much. We're near the Santa Monica Bay. We're near the Santa Monica Mountains. You know, we have natural resources all around us. And so I want to answer your question about why come to West LA? Because we have a tremendous program. It's good for people who want certificates in their field, uh, whether or not it's uh, dental hygiene or some uh, aviation technology. We're tops. Uh, travel department. We're the best travel department in the entire United States at the community college. And that's incredible to have that kind of hospitality program. And I'm very involved in ecotourism, so I understand what they're doing, and they're doing a wonderful job. But in addition to that, students should come here 
because they can get a good basic education, get their AA degree, and they can easily get transferred to any of our California universities, state university systems, and our private colleges. We are as good as those other colleges that I almost hate to meet, uh, mention that are a few miles to the west and a few miles to the east and north. We are just as good. They may be doing more publicity than we are, but we have the same quality program, and our programs are transferable. And that is why we're doing this show, and a series of shows, if you will, to inform the public as to what West LA College has to offer, and of course the other campuses. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about something that's very important, and that's our environment, which you're involved in, and so important in this particular college. You have a great biology department, you have a great um, horticulture department, and I'd like you to elaborate on that before we talk about what you're doing traveling around the world when you're not playing trustee here at West LA College, if you will. I'm always back to do my vote, so my trips are uh, short. But, you know, I've done 600 documentaries on the environment for my eco news television show. I do ecotourism documentaries around the world. I just climbed the Kilimanjaro, Mount Kilimanjaro, the top of Africa, 19,336 feet. Not too many people can claim to have done that. And I've done 2,000 radio shows, uh, longest running environmental program in the country, Environmental Directions, thousands of interviews with environmental experts, uh, you name them, uh, famous uh, people like uh, Jane Goodall, David Suzuki, Paul Ehrlich, uh, Carl Sagan, all these uh, uh, top scientists, activists. But talk about the environment. Something that people don't realize is we actually, as a board of trustees, because of myself and another trustee introducing a resolution to oppose the fracking, we are on an oil field. We are next to an oil field. And they want to frack. Fracking is dangerous. It's horrible. It can create toxics to people. I want a healthy, safe environment for our students. So we're opposing that kind of uh, oil development. We need oil. I'm not opposed to oil development per se. How it's done and where it's done is what's important. It certainly is. Some of the people that I've worked with are very interesting and certainly uh, throughout the career we talked about celebrities that are involved and want to do things for our environment. Cy Richardson is one of those individuals I've known for I think around 33 years now. So I'm sure that he would like to help and lend his support in, in, in the importance of that. Uh, as far as the college goes here and the fracking that you're talking about, what's being done about that? Because the oil wells are literally just uh, less than, uh, you know, a football field away on, on some of the campus. Well, we're keeping an eye on it and we're following the uh, actions and proposals and uh, trying to put in our comment. And I think that's important. And what I want to encourage the public to do is comment, be an activist, make democracy work, vote. Voting is so important. When I got elected last year to my fourth term, the turnout was so small. We have over two million voters in our district, four million people in my district, 34 cities in the Los Angeles Community College District, and maybe about 300,000 voted. The election before that, maybe 600,000 people voted. This is not making democracy work. So regardless of what party you belong in, this is not a political party issue. It doesn't matter if you're Democrat, Republican, Green, Peace and Freedom, Independent. It matters that you care about education and that you get the right trustees in who want to make sure we have student success. That is one of the most critical issues. And talking about celebrities, because I know you've done thousands of interviews with celebrities, I must say that I'm really pleased to see that they are finally adopting the environment as a cause because I coordinated the first Earth Day in 1970 in Southern California. So I've been doing environmental work for 44 years. And back then it was environment versus economics, uh, environmentalists versus business people, celebrities were taking on other challenges they didn't want to identify, but now they're finally realizing the importance of saving wildlife, saving habitat, and uh, stopping the climate change problems that are going on. And one of the things I'm so proud of, we got our bus service right up here to the campus because not everybody should be driving or have to drive a car. We have to have mass transit. And so even though the metro system didn't come right to the campus, at least we now have the transfer from the metro 
to a bus that comes right onto campus, and that took a few years to make happen. So there are all these kinds of little things, you know, aside from just people doing the right thing and recycling and riding their bicycle and uh, doing their own conservation activities. <laughs> As we leave on this broadcast, I'd be remiss once again if I didn't mention two things, and that is your children, your students, are going to undergo stress. And stress is a very important thing in our society and how you overcome stress. So from your point of view, and here is a wonderful person, the trustee of the college, Nancy, you've got three Emmy Awards for your documentaries. Certainly, that must have been stressful. So first, how do you handle stress? And then, as a highlight before we leave, your three Emmy Awards that you received. I don't think that I really handle stress. I'm always stressed because there's so much to do. But you know, what's great about being an activist, whether or not you're a politician, an educator, a student, uh, a celebrity, a citizen who cares, being involved. You meet wonderful people like yourself, the students here at the campus, the faculty, the staff, and you see them making changes. You see them caring. And that overrides any stress. Be involved. Create, do something, whether or not you're the, the artist, the videographer, we're right here in Hollywood. We have programs at West LA College to get people involved in the film industry. Uh, whether or not you're the scientist, we, we've got so many great ecological systems here to study. Whether or not you're the, the uh, um, actor, the actor, the, the uh, artist, we have it. And just taking your talents and putting them to use can keep you healthy, happy, and wonderful. And that's what gets me through the crazy politics sometimes. <laughs> and, you know, I'm out there still creating, and I, I welcome anybody to, to, to work uh, with uh, this program and other programs. There's so many opportunities uh, to create, and hopefully you'll, you'll win some awards like I have. Well, from all of us at Talk Back at West LA College, I'm Pete Allman, and this is Nancy Perlman. And Nancy, thank you for talking to Thank you so very much. It's a pleasure. Welcome. Our special guest today is Professor Josefina Colton. Welcome. Thank you. All right, Professor. Um, how long have you been teaching at West? I've been teaching at West since 1993 as a part-timer, and then I uh, as a professor in 1995. Okay. Um, in what country um, are you from? I'm from Mexico City. Okay, all right. Um, what would you What would you say is the most enjoyable thing about teaching here at West? Uh, I love teaching here at West, particular, particularly because it's a very diverse group of students, and I love that. And also, since the language that I teach Spanish is very necessary in the Southern California. I love, particularly here at West, that the students, uh, their original language always is oral. They always speak, and so they are not uh, afraid to uh, express themselves orally. And so that's what I want for my students to do, to be able to learn and uh, use the language. And here I find it very easy at West. Okay, speaking of language, I know that you have a study abroad program where your students actually get to spend a semester in Spain. How did that program um, originate? Well, this program originated in 1970s with my husband, Dr. Donald Colton, who used to work in the district office as a, a director of the programs. And then here at West, we started in, in 2001 with a program in Mexico, Guadalajara, and also we have another program in 2003 started in Salamanca, Spain. We've been going every summer, uh, bringing around like 20 to 29 students every summer. This summer I'm going to take 22 students and they are already set up to go. And it's in Salamanca, which is 205 kilometers from Madrid. And it's a very nice city, it's a World Heritage site and it has still the origins of back in the Roman times. We had the Roman bridge there, and where you can also see the, the real dormants. I want to say that uh, Salamanca inspired uh, the first novella ever written in Spanish, which is Las Rillas de Tormes. 
uh, and it's very, very nice, the start of the, the culture of Spanish. Wow, that's amazing. So your students, they get to experience the culture and food and just all around what Spain is about. What other countries have you um, took your students to? Well, I only have taken students to Spain because since the subject I teach is Spanish, but I would love to take them to other places. And uh, we're thinking now of Panama, a program during the winter of two weeks. That will be during the winter, which is better, better for students to, to those who work and who cannot spend the full month, then at least two weeks will be very useful for them. And they will use the language because they will be immersed in a program.